Okay, so we've, uh, we've been fishing for a, a bit of bait, funny enough, and we've got some. Uh, we've got some nice launts in here. They are alive. There we go. <laughs> they like to sit still, but they're definitely alive. And we've had some, uh, obviously, nice mackerel as well. But also, what we did was, we took a strip of that uh, mackerel, we drift them over a bank, and I've just hooked into something that is worth showing you people because you don't want to get twanged by one of these. That is a weaver, a lesser weaver. And that little fin, stale dorsal fin, standing up on its back, I'm going to put it down on the, uh, to show it, a bit, show it a bit better. And there you go. So I'm going to show you with the knife. Turn him off. Don't see what Martin's up to. If you have a look, this here is the dorsal fin. This here. And that has got spikes on it that contain venom. So recognise that fish. When that spine's down, they're very innocuous looking little things. So uh, that'll ruin your day if you get tagged by that, believe you me. Anyway, it's not his fault he's a weaver, is it? So I'm going to put him back. Well, to be fair, the weed is making it virtually unfishable, but I'm going to put a little bubble float on there with a piece of mackerel strip and just uh, see if I can flick this out, let it drift out, and pick up one of these mackerel that's around. And I'd like a garfish, that'd be nice. I've had a garfish for a little while. So make that drag nice and light. So I'll hear that tear off, should a mackerel grab it. I've got high hopes for that actually. Because they're all around, all around me, the uh, uh, busting on the surface. You can't see them at the moment, but every now and again, big patch of them will come up. And there we go. <laughs> that just shows that the uh, float, float method works. <laughs> mackerel straight on there. Let me get him in. Lovely sight, something we don't see enough of. Fantastic. I suspect I'm not the only one who does this, but with the price of squid as it is at the moment, um, 20 pound a box in most places, around about that, more in some. Um, I tend not to want to waste it. I mean, I can remember when it was five pound a box. That's that was for a five pound box. Um, in which case, at the end of the day, you didn't really mind feeding the gulls or you know the fish and dropping, just throwing it back. Now, really, can't afford to do that. I can't anyway. So what I do is the night before a, a trip, I take me fr uh, squid out of the freezer and I put it in the cool box. That way. Literally, all I do, break the first few off the top, they're sort of, not defrosted, but defrosted enough for me to just to get them out, and then the rest stay there for the uh, rest of the day. And what that means is, um, 
if I've got say three pound out of that five pound box left, it goes straight in the freezer when I get home. And it comes out great, it comes out really good. I mean, in the summer, you've got to treat it a bit kinder, but particularly in the winter, that doesn't really come out with a pink tinge next time, it's just good. And, it, and, it, and if it has got a little pink tinge, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not at the end of the world. I used to chuck squid away as soon as I had any sort of pink tinge. Mistake, all right? It still catches. It really does. I wouldn't want it totally rank, don't get me wrong. Um, but, you know, a little tinge of pinkness on it, I'll still use it. And it still catches. Anyway, maybe a little tip there, save a few quid on bait. Got a life belt, a little life pout on this one here, which, uh, you know, I think it's, had, it's got some interest in it. I'm not sure what. It's been ticking out a bit. It, it, the pout itself wasn't strong enough to uh, to be doing that. So I think something might just have hold of him, pulling it away. Could be a ray. We'll see. Anyhow, some simple things that, that we all sort of know and do because we've been fishing for years. Not everyone, not a lot of new people new to fishing don't know it and simple way I hook a, a squid is, is example a guy the other day said to me how do you put your squid on so there you go people do ask anyway this is just how I do it I go in through the chip there like that bring it out reverse it through the middle of the squid reverse it through the middle do that about three times and then it's ruched up and then you pull the rest of the squid back over that tag end like so and there you go and it tends to sit there quite nicely and the only thing different that I might do with that sometimes is take the head off straight through the middle of the head I've done it like that for many years and hey works for me I'll let that develop slightly what we'll show you is a knot so with a bit of luck you'll see this so this is 80 pound mono it's a small but very strong barrel swivel give myself about I oh, know what's that, seven, eight inches through the uh, eye of the swivel. Now what I do with this 80 pound mono, I give it four turns. Two, three, four. I then go behind it to make a loop and simply go four more turns inside that loop. Two, three, four. And then basically grab that tag end and you pull it slightly. Before you snug it down, as always, give it a little wet, just so you don't burn the mono. And then you pull that down, pull that into a barrel, give that tag end another pull, I'll use my teeth again. And the whole thing snugs down into a nice barrel. And you can cut that fairly tight. Don't want too much tag end on, on that bit because it will uh, catch any weed going through. And uh, I use exactly the same knot for the hook. In this instance I'm using a very strong 2-0 hook there. So through the eye of the hook, yourself about that much. Four turns, one, two, three, four. Make a loop behind it, and then four more turns inside. One, two, three, four. Pull it up a touch, wet it, snug it down, pull the tag end again, and that end, I'll give myself a little bit more tag which sometimes helps to hold the bait on and there you go so that's what's that maybe 800 mil length not a lot of tide today it's probably about a four six which down equates to about a medium sized tide down here on the south coast whatever was on that didn't look like it's come back unless it's a dogfish sitting there very nicely which they tend to Okay, so that was a mono knot. I think I, I, that mono knot, uh, basically, I think it's known as a grinner. Uh, at least I know it as a grinner. Other people might call it something different. Anyway, that was the mono knot. You need an entirely different knot for braid. So this is the one I always tie. Now this is uh, about forty pound braid. Again, through the loop, just just the once. I'm going to give myself a little bit more line there to work with. So. Let's go through through the loop, give myself a good sort of a 12 inches of uh, line through there this time. And what I like to do is give myself the two fingers there and I come under those two fingers to make a loop. Okay, so now I've just made a, a loop around both the bits of line 
and I'll do a dozen turns inside that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then what I do, holding the main line and the tag end, you pull all of it down neatly, 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 neatly into a barrel like that and then you just pull the barrel up and you pull that tight. Now that knot there, I really don't tie any other braid knots. So if I'm tying braid to any sort of swivel, that's it. And uh, it's always about a dozen turns with that strength of braid, which is to say is that's probably uh, Power Pro in 40 pounds. If it was 50 pounds, I'd tie the same knot. And it just doesn't slip. It's a good. It's a really good knot. Um, other knots are available, but that's the one I tie. And as I showed, said to you uh, earlier, what I do is I find one of my nice strong snap links, and literally put my snap link on the swivel, and there you go. So. Boom, go into a swivel and a snap link, and then I just tie my trace. Just put a tie out and a tie. Out. I just took it straight on there. Easy peasy. There we go. Anywho, didn't want to uh, film earlier because it was persistently raining. Um, but I've had a few fish, um, some blondes, and small lights. And I'll show you what I've done with one of the small lights. I'm going to keep them one. Um, to weigh in for the comp. Brought it up nicely now, though. lovely blue sky. Uh, I'll show you this, uh, this small eye. There we go, so is kept alive in that bucket nicely with a, a gorilla tub, I should say, with buckets of water in and out. And uh, I'll let him go, as I do all of them. I don't eat rays. Um, they're, they're decent eating, actually. I have, I have eaten them um, in uh, restaurants on occasions but uh, I won't eat myself I, I just I like him I don't want to kill him so first fish in the uh, in the tab tub if I get anything bigger I'll release him and keep that one so just up upgrade it and uh, but I think that's that's a nice small eye actually that's that should be close to a specimen size we'll see you later won't we so Here's Mr. Small Light, alive and kicking. I'm now heading down slipway to release him. And hopefully I'm filming this. Any spherical circuits are still working there. And off. Oh, you jolly well go. Just get his bearings. There he goes, yeah. Lovely. And he's away. Sweet. Eleven pound four by the way. Here we go, right. So this is something reasonable. Very reasonable. In fact, often you can't you can't tell what a fish is. You might have noticed over the years. Any film I'm in, you try to I anyway try to guess what a, a fish is before it comes up. It's just a bit of fun, just like doing it. But you can, you can be very wrong sometimes with what you think it is. Yeah, not all fish behave the same. I think I mentioned before, I've had rays that have took off, you know, on, on runs that you would have thought they were smooth outs. And uh, sometimes eels come up and you think, oh, have I got a good cod on? And actually vice versa. More than once, um, I've heard tale of, of people that thought they had eels on so they were kind of just bullying them up to the surface 
and then lo and behold saw they were big old cod which they certainly wouldn't have bullied so much had they have thought it was that so yeah you can never quite tell this is just starting to come up a bit in the tide which smacks of rail or reel again just guessing though the honest is I haven't seen it so I don't know little hooks on this one actually which uh, they're small they're two O's but they're, they're quite strong well I hope they're strong anyway I'm gonna find out by getting this fish to the surface well side of the boat at least I want to say oh, I want to say it's a ray maybe because of uh, the fact that I haven't really shook its head violently and go on crackers. Oh. A fair bit of uh, pressure on this fish. <laughs> yeah. It's probably about as hard as it's going to run today, which adds to the fight, of course, and plus the size of the weight you've got on. I'm just about to chuck a great big bait on as well on the other rod. A uh, big chunk of pout I was going to stick on just to give yourself a bit of action normally we'll stay away from the looks of eels and eels in particular anyway but what is this a ray coming in backwards well that'll do it <laughs> that'll definitely do it <laughs> I say in a bit of tide with uh, a ray curled up like that yeah Okay, well, happy to see him though. He's probably not so happy to see me. But coming in like that, wrapped up and coming in backwards, it's not even a big ray. But man, alive. There's some pressure there. Oh, it's not a bad ray. I'm not saying it's not a big one. Quite a nice undulate. Well, that's why. Looked him in the bloody wing. Crikey O'Reilly, no wonder. Come here you, I'm trying to help you out. So he will be swimming away from me all the time. Now fish there. Let me, come on. Right, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do him a favour. Lift him in quick. Not bad, Ray. There we go. Now undulate. Let's get a hook out of his wing quick, first thing first. No wonder. So there you go. So it just goes those those little hooks are still strong. And here we go. So I'm going to do you a favour, mate. And get that horrible parasite off your gonad. There you go. Let's see if he's got any more on him. Watch the rays mouth piece there's another one of those leeches there horrible things there you go mr angela straight back and he did not miss about oh well a bit of action and i've done him a favor i probably didn't like being pulled in but i'm pretty sure he liked that the parasite pulled off of his uh bollock yeah, ask any bloke, I think they'd say the same thing. What if he done that on purpose?